My name's Jeff, I'm the director here at Insight, uh, and I'd, I'd like to start today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we're gathered and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging, and to extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders might be joining us today in person or in webinar land. Uh, today, it's my great pleasure to introduce Dan Phillips. Dan's is an advanced educator here within the team and a psychologist by trade. He's a lifer in the alkaline drug sector. He's been dependent on working in alkaline drug services for the <laughs> best part of his career. But it's my great pleasure to introduce Dan to give us an update on methamphetamine stats and statistics. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I too would like to pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the land and uh, start off with a trivia question. So looking at Australian speed records, uh, who knows who holds the record for the women's 400 metres? I thought everyone will know this one. Ariana Timmons. Okay. Oh, 400 metres running. Oh, track. Kathy Freeman. Kathy Freeman. Kathy. That's very good. Oh, the reason why I'm asking about this too is because there's a link with speed in the Commonwealth Games, but uh, an Aboriginal woman I work with told me that this part of uh, Brisbane, Roma Street, was a very special place where uh, different groups of Aboriginal people would come together uh, to meet and they'd have their own Olympics and contests here. So um, I thought that would be a, a good way to start off the seminar. So there's Kathy Freeman. And the fastest ever over 100 metres in Australia. Oh, in Australia. In Australia, yeah. The Australian record holder, so um, yeah, Patrick, yeah. very good. Yeah, you had an Irish father. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, Patrick Johnson. Yeah. So uh, they hold the Australian records, but you'd have to think that there are probably some people who, who did even faster uh, times uh, going back over the thousands of years where people met here. They're both Queenslanders too, by the way. Uh, so keeping up to speed, so with um, methamphetamines, um, there's been a whole lot of research done and I'll be looking at uh, some of those uh, major reports and giving uh, you a bit of a, a quick summary and also looking at um, some of the data that's been collected. So with the agenda today, with looking at the research, we're focusing on the harm. Uh, psychosis is obviously one of the major sources of harm and deaths, the ultimate harm. The sources of data, there's a number of uh, major data uh, collection points in Australia, so I'll go through those and try and pick out uh, what fits in with the picture. Uh, the story starts here. So the National Drug Strategy Household Survey, one of their questions was, um, what drug do you think of when you asked about the drug problem? And this graph is really striking, because if you look at that, you can see the methamphetamine just shooting up while the other drugs are all going down. So there's quite a, a marked change there. And um, what's disappointing too is that just creeping along the bottom there is alcohol, which is, we all know, is the one that causes the most harm. It's flying under the radar. So there's been a big difference in uh, public perception about methamphetamines. And, and hopefully look at the evidence today, we'll see you know, how much of that is based on evidence or what might be a media beat up. So with the household survey, what they found was actually there was a decrease in level of use, you know, decreased by a third. But people were using the pure form of ice and using more frequently and also injecting rates had increased. So that increased the potential for harm for those doing it and also other people come into contact. Uh, they also asked questions about being diagnosed with mental illness and methamphetamine was way ahead there. So you can see uh, with methamphetamine that there's a really big increase in just three years. So the dark blue is 2013 and the light blue is 2016. And it's also way ahead of the other drugs. Uh, the Kessler 10 was applied and what was found was there was another big increase as well. So in just three years, the people rating high or very high went from 27% up to 37%, and that was higher than for any other drug. Uh, they also looked at socioeconomic status, and what they found was similar to with tobacco, where for well, the lowest socioeconomic status having the highest rates, and the, the highest uh, socioeconomic status, but that quintile having the lowest rates. So it uh, decreases across socioeconomic status. So I'll talk more about that later. 
Uh, just recently, the National Wastewater Drug Monitoring Program released their uh, recent report last week, just in time for my seminar, which I'm very grateful for. And uh, this was done in December last year. And they don't test for cannabis, but uh, methamphetamines uh, comes way out ahead of uh, the other drugs there. There's uh, cocaine and ecstasy and heroin. So that's the, the bulk amount there. They also um, looked at how it compares to the amounts that the federal police have seized. And so uh, how, if, um, how, how much you have to import to actually make a profit. So there's only seizing two sevenths of what's imported or what's used by the community. And so it's higher rates of uh, seizures for cocaine, but still translates to about half of what is imported is seized and there's the other half for the market. Uh, so methamphetamine remains the highest of the illicit drugs included in the report, so cannabis isn't there. The trend in Queensland that use is increasing, but there was a, a decline that went from October to June October 2016 to June 2017, and then has increased since then. Uh, this is the regional data in, from Queensland, and there's a couple of years where there's uh, two bars for 2016 and, and three for 2017. If you average those out, you'd see that there's just a continuous increase. That the most recent uh, report has the highest level. Uh, this is looking at uh, uh, the different drugs of uh, methamphetamine having the highest uh, rates there. And the most recent ones from 2017 are the highest that they've ever had. Um, it's much higher than you can see for the other drugs that are shown in that report, that graph, I mean. Uh, this is a study from 2008 that looked at some of the, the major harms from methamphetamine. I thought that could be a, a good basis to look at why there is concern about methamphetamine. Uh, so combinations with other drugs, so with alcohol, there's problems with heart and blood pressure. Uh, with heroin, there can be that repressing of the respiratory system whilst in the amphetamine is increasing the demand and cocaine having that uh, increase in the effect of the vasoconstrictive and cardiotoxic effects. Bloodborne virus transmission, uh, so it's increased risk to sexual risk behaviour. So all the chemsex parties that you're probably well and familiar with and know about. Um, increased sexual arousal uh, and meth use amongst people are HIV positive. Overdose, so overdose, um, people don't necessarily lose consciousness, but there's other ways that it appears. And um, there's that delirium that you probably um, typically associate with it, but all these other physical effects that happen with the heart and the blood pressure. As well as psychologically, that being really agitated and the signs of psychosis. And then people do die. So people die from seizures and heart attacks and respiratory failure. And also can die from hemorrhage and strokes. Uh, so those toxic reactions, that can be fatal, but they don't seem to depend on the size of the dose and they don't depend on how frequently someone's used or the route of administration. So people have had really bad toxic reactions from even small amounts. So it's not dose related. And there have even been people who've had bad reactions on just their first occasion of use. Psychosis, um, it's a different story with uh, relating it to dose. So um, you might be familiar with those researchers. Amanda Baker, who presented here just last year. Uh, so this study was a longitudinal study, and they had uh, a cohort from uh, a large study, the, uh, and it had, um, I think it was about 400 people from Brisbane and Sydney who were accessing community treatment, and another 100 uh, from Sydney who also were dependent but uh, weren't in treatment. And they measured them for psychosis at four different occasions. And they had some really clear results. So the psychosis was related to um, the times of using methamphetamines and there was a dose-dependent relationship. The more people used, the more likely there was going to be signs of psychosis. 
um, temporal relationships that they did use and they're more likely to have psychosis after that. They also found that the use of cannabis and alcohol uh, increased the odds of having uh, psychotic symptoms. So the probability of psychotic symptoms, so if you're not using meth and low levels of cannabis and alcohol, it's 7%. Doesn't that explain a lot when you look around the office? <laughs> All the family gathering. Yeah. <laughs> um, so people using meth for 16 days or more in the month, then that increases greatly. If they're combining that with cannabis and alcohol, even greater again. Uh, so there are some people who had psychotic symptoms even when they weren't using. So uh, some Japanese research that has uh, found that too, that there seems to be a vulnerability of psychosis that continues after people have um, ceased using methamphetamine. Uh, this graph uh, shows the first group with just the, the methamphetamine and the dark lot is when there's no methamphetamine and it increases to, on the amounts of methamphetamine. Then we've got combined with alcohol and that goes up even higher, combined with cannabis, higher again. And the last one over here, combined with cannabis and alcohol, it goes that bit higher as well. Uh, so the conclusions, um, this being a longitudinal study rather than a cross-sectional one, it provided some good evidence that there was a causal relationship, uh, but it wasn't conclusive as what direction that cause was going in. So it could well be that people who are psychotic are more likely to keep drinking and smoking and, and using methamphetamine. That could be what's causing it. But it may well be that the more you have, the more likely you are to be uh, experiencing symptoms of psychosis. Unfortunately, they said um, uh, there was an unmeasured factor, like sleep deprivation was uh, not included. So I think that's the biggie. If people were to look at, uh, are people missing out on sleep, then that would, uh, really uh, give a strong indication of whether they can become psychotic or not. I base that on just clients I've worked with where people have told me that they have a routine for themselves where they do sleep but then they don't have any um, experience of psychosis. You know, people who are dealing, who are having it every day and still not having any signs of psychosis. So being able to sleep, I think, is a, a crucial factor there. Just to try and make my point. Uh, so this is a review of um, studies looking at uh, methamphetamine and psychosis and they went through the databases uh, uh, from December 2016 and going back and they found 20 studies that were done with 13 different populations and with those studies uh, they are done in different countries and you can see Australia leads the way there so more research being done on amphetamines and psychosis in Australia than any other country. A source of national pride. I think there's never been a more exciting time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at uh, the frequency of methamphetamine use and the severity, and they were found to be consistently associated with psychosis. So like the other study, they did find that. Um, other factors like social demographic factors were not associated. That review did not mention sleep deprivation at all, unfortunately. Just making my point again. <laughs> uh, looking at the, the markets, this is the Australian Crime Commission. And with their seizures, um, what they were seizing at the border coming into Australia uh, from 2009 to 2010, up to 2013 14, there was this huge increase 27 times. So, what's coming into the country increased greatly. So, so much of the research shows that from 2010 onwards, there's this big increase that uh, we keep finding in, in different sources of data. Uh, the Drug Use Monitoring uh, Australia, Duma, there haven't been um, no chemical attacks in this Duma recently. I promised myself I wouldn't make a Syria joke, and I think I've, I should have kept to that promise. Um, so interviewing people in police stations and wash houses, and done on a quarterly basis, and with those interviews, um, they also collect urine samples uh, twice a year as well. The most recent one in Brisbane was in 2015. Uh, 
large number of subjects, 381, uh, most were male, and 43% tested positive to methamphetamines. So doesn't that explain a lot? When you think about the last time you were in the watch house, you know, what it was like for these other people there. Why oh, they didn't stop talking. Um, so 43%, that's quite a high number. Uh, so looking at the results for the watch house, you can see that it's just going up, going up, going up to the most recent one of 2015. When people are asked you know, what form of methamphetamine they've used, uh, they don't give nice neat answers about powder, base or uh, ice or crystal. There's some other things that come out. They talk about goo or um, this purple stuff or white rock. So there's often there's mixtures. So what's being reported is um, uh, there can be a mixture of crystal and, and powder and other stuff that's not neatly fitting into what we may think of as the different forms. Uh, in the last 12 months, uh, quite a lot had injected, 38% um, thought it dependent, and overdosing was quite common. When asked about the market in Brisbane, they said that availability was really high. They rated it 9 out of 10, very easy to get. So the quality was 7 out of 10, and I thought the number of sellers had increased. It's a picture of the Brisbane market. If you look behind the pineapples, you might see the ice there. <laughs> um, so Duma also had a, asked about internet with another study. And what they found was that um, uh, only 5% of people reported purchasing online. So, um, so with people being arrested, uh, it hasn't really uh, transferred to buying um, online with the dark net, it's mostly done from face-to-face -face contact. But also, they found that um, with asking people about these, uh, the arrestees, about what they've um, been looking at online with which drugs, the drug that is most uh, often um, information sorted on is methamphetamine. So uh, there's a lot of interest in it online, so there may be uh, possibility that there'll be a, a transfer there with uh, more and more people looking at accessing through online sources as well. Um, methamphetamine use and crime. So that there's um, methamphetamine, methamphetamine associated with the risk of engagement in crime and also a New Zealand study found that people would actually more likely to use after they have um, stolen. So once they've got the money, the chances of using increased. So rather than needing the drug to, needing the money to go get the drug, um, it was kind of like, hey, I've got the money now, I can go and spend it. So there's different models to explain it, that the drug use creates the need for doing the crime, or that the crime, like you're having extra money, um, creates the need for the drug, or well, there's a common cause, whether it's socioeconomic status or friends or other things, or it's just a random coincidence. That's random. <laughs> so, if you don't know anything about PowerPoint, that took well, months to do that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, the, uh, the Duma sample group, uh, so quite a high number, 35% used meth in the 30 days prior. And um, when asked about their crime, um, and looking at their crime and, and use, they found really strong associations for meth users being higher than heroin and other drugs. Uh, so meth users were more likely to be a property or a drug offender, and then not so, there wasn't that association with violence. So there's been some very um, horrible, uh, murders that have taken place with people under the influence of meth, but they didn't find that there was an increased risk of, of uh, committing violent crimes if you use meth. Um, the, the violent offenders who had used meth, 58% uh, of them attributed to meth, uh, same with property offenders, explained it as a big factor. So people actually using can see that there's a link with their drug use and their offending. Uh, so obviously the most common ways that uh, the drugs involved is what people do when they're intoxicated or needing the money to go buy. So it's a common story that people use, get into a habit of using, don't have the money, 
what am I going to do? Then do the crime to get the money and then end up in prison. So prison. So looking at people going into prison and this is quite striking that from uh, prison entrance in 2015 uh, increased from 37% people use methamphetamines up to 50%. So that was even more common than cannabis. So people going to prison were more likely to have used methamphetamine than cannabis in the previous 12 months. And also it was the younger people. So with the National Household Survey, it was looking like there was this ageing cohort. But amongst offenders, it seems to be younger people that are more likely. Uh, so when I worked in prison, one of the older guys in there talked about the chemical kids. So he just saw these younger people as they didn't respect prison culture, they were really hard to live with and hard to control and manage, and a big part of that was all the different drugs that were being used. Uh, so quite a high level have uh, of recent methamphetamine users, so half of the people, more likely with the younger ones, and more likely to have an extensive prison history. Uh, what also came out was that they're more likely to have a trade certificate so um, than people who used other drugs. So the explanation for that that they gave in the study was that um, there's training that's done in prison. So if you have an extensive prison history, you're more likely to get a trade certificate that way. Um, I had um, someone here at one of the workshops last year who worked for TAFE, and she saw a link with uh, methamphetamines and what she called the, the dirty trades, so with concreting and plastering. And you can see that that can be quite functional. You know, if you've got to do a whole lot of plastering, a whole lot of concreting, methamphetamine could work for you in the short term. Uh, so drug users were less likely to be employed, and more likely to be unable to work too. Uh, so the prison entrance um, more likely to have high levels of psychological distress, those with the methamphetamine, so similar to the household survey, finding that again. Um, more likely to take a medication for mental health condition, so like the household survey, and would rate their mental health as fair or poor, history of self-harm and head injuries as well. So methamphetamine, the, the cohort has all these other risk factors there too that just get compounded. Meth users were in the, more likely to be using heroin than to be using other drugs. So they're more likely to have this established drug of choice and just be experimenting and doing things on weekends. Um, the usual method of use, so this is three different populations and so with the household survey the most common method was ingesting by sniffing it and then people who've been arrested with small amounts and diverted to treatment, the most common method was smoking it but then people going into treatment, the most common method was injecting. So you can see a progression that happens there with the, the different uh, routes of administration or different forms of use. Uh, the illicit drug reporting system, so no doubt many of you are aware of this, it's some um, uh, research done with people who inject drugs and uh, need to have done at least six times in the last six months and the report's done annually. So most people are recruited through NSPs. Uh, so what they've seen uh, from 2010 to 2015 was a big increase in uh, how often people use uh, the crystal form using ice going from seven times last six months up to 20. So that's we we'll keep keep seeing again and again that from 2010 up to recently a big increase in um, in uh, methamphetamine use because of all the ice that's available. Uh, this is their uh, 2017 report and I've got the preliminary findings here and um, I'll explain why I've got that. So the, this is the same as what came out with the, the final report. So the drug of choice asking injecting drug users is heroin, that's by far the most popular. But once again you can see that increase from 2010 up to present with uh, methamphetamine racing up the charts. Uh, the drug injected most often, uh, methamphetamine has overtaken heroin there. So it's uh, got to a point where it's actually the most common injected drug amongst that, that sentinel population that they survey. 
Uh, so asking people if they've been using and you can see that big increase that happens at, from 2010. So from 2010 to 2012, it, it uh, more than doubles. So just a big jump there. Um, what happened in 2011? I don't know. I think maybe the work experience kid hit the delete button and, <laughs> and that data's just gone. But it would be interesting to see how that went. Uh, people using any form in the last six months, so it's quite consistent. So the increase in ICE use, but the number of um, users using meth is staying very similar. Queensland's going up and down quite a bit, but that may be just a statistical error due to a small sample. Uh, this is interesting because if you look at the powder and the base forms, it's just dropping, dropping, dropping whilst uh, the crystal form is increasing. So more and more people using crystal. It's um, not always out of choice. Like I've known, think of one client in particular, an older client who told me that um, he would prefer to use um, what he used to use, but he could only access crystal now. Uh, so looking at our recent use and um, you can see in the light blue there that the crystal form is just from 2010 has just increased and increased to nearly everyone will say that that's what they've been using. Uh, whilst the other forms are just dived, so the, the base and the speed. Um, when I looked at that graph, what caught my eye was um, what was happening back in 2003. There was that little peak. Well, that's a bit weird. So. Um, with the interim report, they actually had the table of data there. So I um, could look at that and see that it didn't actually match the graph. So I thought, oh, that's, they've made a mistake. So I sent up an email to let them know. And they thanked me for that and, and said the, the data in the table was correct. Because what they'd done is, was put the, the Queensland rate in there to create that little bump. So I got really excited. I thought, well, when they bring out the, the report, because I was looking at the preliminary findings, I might get an acknowledgement. But they brought up the report and there was no change. They got the, the incorrect one still in there. So it should be 76. Uh, looking at the uh, median days of meth use, um, Queensland's quite low there compared to the national average. Uh, when asking people about availability, nearly everybody says it's easy, with very few saying it's difficult. So with Crystal, hardly anybody, nobody said that. Uh, price, the price had dropped, so it actually got cheaper. So 25% decrease in price. Wouldn't that be nice on some other consumer goods? Um, ignore that 89, that's not correct. Uh, so looking at the, the recent use, you can see that um, methamphetamine is actually as high as uh, cannabis. So, you know, I think of cannabis as being the most common illicit drug, but with the uh, injecting drug users, they're just as likely to have methamphetamine as they are to use cannabis. What's happening in emergency departments? So, um, this goes back a few years, but uh, the uh, most recent data shows this huge increase again over that 10 year period, increased by eight times. Uh, the Australian Bureau of Statistics brought out a, a book report on drug-induced deaths last year and methamphetamines, it was a, a very big increase. So um, if you look at 99, it was 76 uh, and then up to 2016, 363. And so um, 2015, uh, when uh, Cameron uh, presented here, I looked at his, the video of his report he cited data from 2015 and it was less than half of what it became in 2016. So like a, a double in that one year, the number of people dying from methamphetamine related deaths. Um, so with the Australian Bureau of Statistics report, the psychostimulants is what they described the drug as, with um, uh, methamphetamine being included there. And so they found that there was um, uh, most of the deaths were unintentional and um, initiation of use was uh, quite young, 22. Uh, so amphetamine use had declined but increase in death rates, but while well, death rates had increased. 
So obviously ice is the key factor in that. Um, so with this one, uh, the light blue, you can see the red arrow pointing to it, is uh, methamphetamines. So once again, from 2010 onwards, there's been a big increase in, in the number of deaths. And what you may also notice is that there's um, seven drugs listed, but only six graphs. So, I, I, it's only six lines, so I contacted the uh, Exchange <laughs> of Statistics and um, asked them about that, and they said, ah, oh, thanks for pointing that out. Um, what had happened was that the, the cannabis data and the methamphetamine data had been somehow combined, and uh, one plotted at the top of the other one. Not meth, uh, cannabis data and the antipsychotics. And also, they told me it wasn't actually age specific, it was age standardised death rates. So, oh, that's very good. <laughs> so, this is the correct one, and it's quite interesting too. I think it's worth getting that uh, antipsychotics being involved in deaths, that's uh, following the same trend. So I think there's a, a factor there that people who are dying from methamphetamines, um, one in eight also have antipsychotics in the system, so the two uh, obviously are linked together. I wonder if that's because in prisons they're prescribing antipsychotics at an elevated rate for what mental health issues are there, as yeah. is the diary effect, and I think that yeah. And then that combination, I wonder if there's that link there between prisons and antipsychotics. Yeah, so I don't know when that practice started or increased, if it's related to that, but it does uh, mirror the same increase with um, ice being coming more available. So, um, yeah, so there's a link there with those two drugs. Uh, with the drug deaths, um, uh, the number is quite significant. So if you look at the size of that, just how many people are dying um, and uh, from, with methamphetamine and also um, the, the causes of death with accidental overdoses. So besides overdoses, transport accidents are the second most common type of drug-related death with uh, methamphetamine being the most common drug involved in that. So the roadside drug testing is an obvious way of addressing that. Also, methamphetamines for the heart disease is the main factor for, for deaths. Um, this study also looked at methamphetamine-related deaths in Australia. Uh, so the professors there involved, and um, I've got a, an action shot of Johan there. He's a forensic pathologist. As you can see there, he's got the, the gown and the goggles on. No gloves. <laughs> so if... Johan offers you a sandwich, I think, so I'm not hungry, thank you. <laughs> um, so they looked at um, data from the National Coronial Information System and how many cases that there were there. It was 16, over 1,600, uh, with the rate increasing significantly over time. Uh, the manner of death, um, so uh, there was most people it was overdoses, with other drugs being involved, or that was the largest group, that 43.2%. Quite a significant gender difference with uh, uh, females having a higher rate for overdose than the males, and then with males having a much higher rate of dying from accidents than females. 85% of suicides were by hanging, so that was quite different. So normally with suicide, there's a real clear gender difference that men are more likely to use violent means and women are more likely to use poisoning overdoses. But with methamphetamine, that difference disappeared, that gender difference disappeared. So it could well be that the methamphetamine is making people less inhibited and more aggressive and, and that gender difference doesn't happen anymore. Uh, so with um, the number of cases, 40% uh, occurring outside the major capital cities. So about a third of the population lives outside the major capital cities. So that's a significant increase if you're living in a rural area. Uh, so other substances involved with opioids and uh, hypnosedatives, the uh, benzos and barbs. Cardiovascular disease, obviously, is the, the main one there, again. 
That's not the word. Yeah. It's, <laughs> but I'll let that go. <laughs> Um, psychopathology, so mood disorders, so you don't get something for nothing, so if you're feeling really good then you're going to have a long period of feeling really down, and then it can be quite a long period of recovery. Anxiety disorders are very common, and suicide and violent behaviour, and psychosis. Uh, with uh, mortality, so much greater increase than people who don't use. Uh, about the alcohol increase in the heart rate and blood pressure mentioned before, uh, in combination with other drugs, uh, serotonergic drugs, then we've got the risk of serotonin syndrome, and that can be um, uh, a factor with uh, antidepressants. So many people are doing that, so it's about 20%, like one in five of the methamphetamine related deaths also have the antidepressants on board. So that risk factor is something that um, maybe more education is required. Uh, so, like the first study done, I talked about back in 2008, there didn't appear to be a clear dose response. So it wasn't a case of the more you had, the more likely you were to die. And very low doses may be lethal. Uh, so saw sort of the, uh, the death rate increasing and increasing and increasing. The most recent one, 2015, looks like there's a drop, but there were still 32 cases that hadn't been added to that. Uh, you can see that for the, the female population that the increase is not quite as dramatic as for the male population. This is quite a busy one, but I've used the red marker to highlight things. So methamphetamine related fatalities. And so there's uh, males four times as likely as females. The age range, uh, you might be able to see for the uh, people at the back, for the female population, the range was from 14 to 65. So someone as young as 14 and the female population in the males is 15. So people can be, I think, you know, quite naive users can have died from using. Uh, the unemployment rate, 61%, so much more likely to be unemployed. Um, history of injecting drug use, so 43% had not injected, there were no signs of injecting that they had, had died from methamphetamines. And 91% uh, weren't involved in any treatment. Uh, the NSP uh, data collection, so back in 2017, uh, collected in February, and amongst the younger people, uh, stimulants was the category that came out on top. So that's similar to the prison entrance, where it's the stimulants that methamphetamines are most likely to be used by the the younger people going into prison too. So I um, uh, often think of steroids as being the most common uh, drug being used or people being reported by NSP uh, clients, but uh, for the younger group, uh, the stimulants were. Uh, for NSP, um, got to hand it to Ninja Sex Party for the work that they do. You know, they could very versatile, they can do musical comedy, and as well as doing harm reduction and data collection. So quite impressive. Um, the Australian um, Methamphetamine Use and Outcome Study. So, another study by the Australian Institute of Criminology. So, they looked at the different data sources and uh, the, uh, the household survey, as well as DUMA, which I've mentioned, uh, our national minimum data set, and the National Prison uh, Health Data Collection. And looking at the demographics of methamphetamine users, looking at employment, education, and health outcomes. Uh, so the costs of um, serious organised crime related to illicit drug activity estimated to be 4.4 billion. So I think of that in terms of hospitals. You know, it's probably two, three hospitals, depending on how big you want to build them. So Tony Abbott was offering to build one in Tasmania for a billion, so it could be more than four. Um, so the expense is quite huge. Um, so looking at the health impacts of illicit drug use, the money lost to the economy, that it's, you know, this stuff is being imported, it's going overseas, and then what happens to the output from the drug users, uh, lost output there. Um, so that a big increase by police de detainees that they saw from Duma, uh, the prison entrance, a big increase, where it's you know, becoming the, the drug more likely to be used even more than cannabis, 
and then looking at the attribution rate, asking people, did it have an impact on your offending? And another big increase as well. Uh, impact on the healthcare system, uh, ambulance costs, uh, so the increase in emergency department presentations, hospital admissions, mental health treatment, and our services as well. So we're focusing on the ambulance, uh, ambulance services, some data from uh, Victoria and from comparing 2011 to 2012 and this uh, increase had almost doubled in Melbourne and it tripled in regional Victoria. So that was a few years ago, so we'd be thinking that it's probably increased even further than that. So the cost to ambulances uh, has meant that, you know, as we've heard from many people, that uh, ambulances sometimes now will not attend without police accompanying them. And so there's uh, a big cost to the community with uh, the costs involved there. Um, this is a photo of the WA, uh, Western Australia, for the very first ambulance service. And the guy at the front sitting down, his uniform included a sword and a helmet. I thought, don't let Donald Trump see this, because <laughs> he might think that could be a good idea for our, our ambulance workers, our paramedics now. Um, also, if you look at the guys in the back row, one of them didn't read the memo about November. <laughs> <laughs> um, so police detainees, uh, looking at education, so... Um, the meth users um, have much lower rate for completing year 11 and 12. Uh, um, the rate for um, unemployment is higher. Unemployed not looking for work is much higher and sleeping rough is much, much higher. So on all those uh, demographic measures, they're coming out having worse results there. Uh, so across all the data sources that they looked at in this big review, uh, compared to other illicit drugs, those um, and those who do not use methamphetamine users had worse employment, worse education, and worse housing. And this effect was more pronounced for ICE users than for people using other forms of methamphetamine. So the conclusion they came up with that the impact in the Australian community from methamphetamine use, in particular ICE, is higher than that arising from use of other drugs. So. Um, Hence, there's been a lot of focus uh, from the Australian Crime Institute and, and federal police on methamphetamine. Uh, alternative way of looking at this um, is looking at uh, those socio-demographic factors. Um, Melissa Lukashenko is an uh, Australian writer, a local uh, Murray woman, and uh, she won a Walkley Award for a feature piece she did on uh, the underclass in, in our part of the world. Uh, it was titled Sinking Below Sight, Down and Out in Brisbane and Logan. And she makes some good observations about uh, the underclass. So people on uh, welfare, that we've got um, like a, a ladder in Australia where people hope to climb up that ladder and do better and better. And you hope that you can um, improve your situation. And she says for the underclass, they're not even in the same yard as the ladder. They're sort of locked out from that that there's this uh, feeling that you won't do better and that your kids can't do better. And so there's that, so I think there's that uh, understanding as to what's happening with methamphetamine that could be uh, the depths of despair, that that's quite an attractive drug to take. And that could be, um, it's got its positive factors that if you're trying to get by without food and you're skipping meals, then that can be quite a helpful way of doing it or one means to doing that also trying to do a lot more work, trying to do, um, we've got people living under the, uh, I forgot the term, so people living uh, in the, the lowest socioeconomic group, there's many who are not just on welfare but are the working poor. And so having methamphetamine can be really helpful for, for doing those menial jobs. So in my work as a clinician, I saw people where that's the way they could use it. They could use it for you know, fruit picking and such, or mushroom picking, whatever it might be. It did have a positive uh, element to it. And when you first start using it, it's hard to feel negative about it, because, hey, you're getting more done whilst you're looking great at the same time. Um, lose a few kilos. Uh, so in Australia, we've um, 
had 27 years of economic growth, but we've got this uh, underclass that isn't talked about. And so with the National Drug Strategy Household Survey, what they found was that there was a clear relationship with that lowest socioeconomic status quintile having the highest rate of use, double the rate of the, the top one. So it, it obviously is a factor. Um, so I hope that um, we can look at methamphetamine not just as the drug on its own, but also looking at some of these social factors that are playing a big part. Uh, so with trying to sum up the last couple of minutes, um, there's obviously uh, an uh, effect on health that we can see that the people who are dying from methamphetamine is increasing and that's not related to dose or level of use. It's, it's quite unpredictable. Psychosis is related to level of use and it also looks like it's related to use combined with alcohol and cannabis as well. Um, and we're seeing that, uh, that the death rate has just increased and increased and increased. Uh, so that concludes my talk for today. Uh, so I'll finish off there. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Do we have any questions? Hi, thank you for that talk. Um, I just want to ask, um, as you said, you know, uh, amphetamines is actually um, connected with the development of psychosis. I just want to know how much among all of these people who developed psychosis had, uh, do we have any data who uh, developed full-blown schizophrenia later on? Uh, um, no, I didn't see anything like that in those reviews. Um, so. The, they did talk about that um, having psychotic episodes in the absence of methamphetamine, though that was a factor. But yeah, I didn't see anything about it. was talking about diagnosis of schizophrenia later on. Thanks, Dean. Hey, I just want to know if there's any data, there's, uh, if there's any correlation between the suicide death and methamphetamine use in the Aboriginal communities, because we know suicide is very high and prominent in the Aboriginal communities, and um, you know, obviously then the um, unemployment and education, housing, other social yeah. determinants are very um, low in those areas. And I just wonder if there's any data or any studies, research that have correlated those two, suicide, methamphetamine, Aboriginal community. Yeah, um, good question. Um, I can't answer it. So with the, the household survey, they did find that there was a high level of meth use in the Aboriginal community. So it looks like that would be a factor then, that there's a high level of use and high suicide rate. So that would be interesting to find out more about that. Yeah. Any other questions? Right, right. No. Uh, if you missed that, Dan will be doing the same presentation at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. <laughs> so uh, you can see him there.